glorifies God. See, I know some people get, you know, they get high on themselves. And they, they start letting pride sink in. And you think that you're worthy to even be able to be in God's presence. But for me, I'm still like that, Sister Simone. God, why do you even love me? <laughs> you said that inside of me, inside my flesh, there's no good thing. But yet you still love me. Come on, somebody. Put your pride down for a second. Just ask yourself the question, why does God love me? Why, how many times have I messed up? How many times have I failed God? How many times have I fallen? But he still loves me. He still has his hand out. Maybe throughout the course of this year, you didn't have as much faith as you thought you should have had. Guess what? He still loves you. <laughs> Maybe you're wobbling a little bit along this, this whole pandemic of a year. Guess what? He still loves you. Because you are not holding on to God. He is holding on to you. See, that's where we got it wrong. We think that we're holding on to him. But he's holding on to you. So in the middle of the storm, God still has you. In the middle of the test, he still has you. In the middle of every trial, he still has you. So if you're like me, you need to start asking the question, God, why do you love me? And then he's just going to say, just because. See, I, I'm telling you, bro, I, I'm trying not to get stuck here. But we're trying, to, we're trying to put together a list to make God love us. We're, we're, we're trying to put together a list. See, see, it's Christmas season, but we're not singing about Santa. Santa has a list. Who's naughty and who's nice? And if you're on the naughty list, you don't get anything. But when it comes to God, God doesn't have a list. When I see the blood, that's all he needs to see. Oh, pastor, you don't know what I've done. All I need to see is the blood of Jesus. When he sees the blood, he'll still bless you. He'll still hold on to you. He'll still carry you. My God, my God, we have to move. Oh, there's so much to deconstruct. If 2020 has taught us anything, there's a deconstruction that's going on. And in the middle of the deconstruction, there is a reconstruction that is going on. We're starting to really see God for who he really is. And for what he really can do. We bless God tonight for what he has done already. Let's take care of some kingdom business. We promised you that we would come into your house every first Friday of every month. And we've done it. We've kept our promise. Not only have we come into your homes, but we've come in in an excellent way. We said from the very beginning, if we're not doing it right, if we can't do it right, we won't do it at all. So every single time we have put forth maximum effort, it's the only way to do it. The only way we're going to honor God is with maximum effort. I want you, if you have been blessed for the last couple of months with this virtual revival, I want you to sow into this vision. As we continue to push forward, I want you to sow into this vision. We have been leading the way, my wife and I. We don't do anything. We don't ask you to do anything that we don't do. So we're going to be starting it off with 100. And I want as many of you as possible that can sow. Join me and my wife tonight and join us with that $100 seed. You might say, Pastor, I can't do a hundred. Listen, we've been asking everybody at every revival, at least sow 20. At least sow a $20 seed. Help us continue to do kingdom 
word. There's no tricks. There's no games. We're not selling anything. There's no weird kind of oil we're going to send to your house. Come on, so no, no prayer cloth coming in the mail. You're not going to get any of that. You're not going to get this weird letter that we just print hundreds of times and send the same letter to everybody. And I, I'm just telling you the truth. We're doing ministry. We want to be able to continue to come into your homes. And even when the pandemic is over, when we can travel again, we want everything to keep on going. So I want you to join us tonight in giving. You will see all the safe and secure ways on your screen right now. Safe and secure. You don't have to worry. Join us in giving. Trust God. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together and running over. Let me pray for you right now. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor and we give you glory. For every person that is sowing into this revival tonight, I pray that there will be nothing missing, nothing lacking, and nothing broken. That you will open the windows of heaven and pour out upon them to where they do not have room enough to receive. Rain, rain. That's what I hear. Rain rain on them oh god that going into 2021 the harvest will overtake them now if you receive that i just want you to put that in the comments i believe the harvest is about to overtake me it's not just gonna catch up to me but it's gonna overtake me and as the praise team is coming i want you to worship if you believe that if you are speaking that over your house over your marriage, over your children, over everything that's connected. Get in the comments and say, I receive it, Pastor. I receive it. I'm standing with you. If you're giving, I just want you to write done, 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 done. If you're standing with us tonight, come on, give me the thumbs up. Give me the green check. Just write done, 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 done. Come on, praise team. Let, let's go crazy in here now. Let's go crazy. Does anybody know that God has the greatest power on tonight? <laughs> I said, God is the greatest power. We give you glory tonight, Lord. Yeah. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. And because God is the greatest power we shall never never be defeated can you help me sing because god because god greatest power is the greatest power we shall never we shall never never be defeated never be defeated and because god It says, I shall rise, I shall be, and I shall go in victory. No weapon formed against me will ever overtake me. Come on, say, I shall rise. I shall rise. Will anybody be? Say I shall go. I shall go. Where he tells me to go. In victory. No weapon form. No against me.
test. The devil is a liar. God is exalted, and he will never be defeated. Oh, never be defeated. Say the devil is a liar. God is exalted, God is exalted, and you'll never be defeated. No, say never be defeated. Say the devil is a liar. God is exalted, God is exalted, never be defeated. Never be defeated. Say the devil is a liar. God is exalted. Say he'll never be defeated. No, he will never be defeated. Oh, say the devil is a liar. God is exalted. Never be defeated. Be defeated. Never be defeated. Even when you get tired. Never be defeated. Even when you get weary. Never be defeated. Say you will never be defeated. Never be defeated. Hey, say the devil is a liar. 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 Hey, hey, say the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Look 
at your neighbor the devil is alive. and say the devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. Say God is exalted. Situation. No matter what it looks like, y'all, I'm always gonna win. Once again, 
Satan is defeated. Hey. Once again defeated. We always say we always win. 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 Say we always win. Hey, you don't stop. Hey, we always win. Come on, put a prince on him right now. tonight. not even a fight and I know brother Jeremy I know even down through the years we have preached it and taught it in a way as if it's a fight but the moment that God threw Satan out of heaven 
it was over. <laughs> oh, stay right there, musician. It, it was over. The moment that he threw him out of heaven, it was already over. The fight was already done. So I know a lot of times we, we, we think that we're still in a fight, we're still in a battle. The scripture even tells us that all we have to do is resist the devil and he'll flee. It doesn't tell us anywhere, get on the ground, roll around with him. It just said resist the devil and he will flee. This fight is already over. Come on somebody right where you are, I want you to lift your hands. As we're getting ready for the word. I want you to lift your hands knowing if you're a person that knows that you have already won. Lift your hands right where you are. Say, God, I appreciate you for what you've done in my life. I thank you, God, that many, many years ago, you went and you suffered, you bled and you died. But you didn't stay dead. But on the third day, you rose again with all power in your hands. And, and because of that, Satan is defeated. <laughs> because of that, Satan is defeated. Wish I had somebody tonight. I said Satan is defeated. Three days later, oh God, Brother Josh, they thought that they had him, but three days later, three days later, he got up out of the grave. Oh God, no death can hold him down. He, I, I better get in here. I, be, I better get in here. I, I better get in here. I better get in here. Lord, have mercy. I feel the Holy Ghost stretching out in me. I feel something pushing me tonight. Three days later, he got up out of the dead with all power. All power. All power. All power in his hands. Listen, give me a few moments here. I got to get this to you. I got to get this to you. My God, I feel glory. I feel glory. I feel glory. I feel glory. I feel glory in this place. Something has already shifted in the atmosphere. Something has already shifted. I know you feel it at home. You already feel it. John 3 and 16. I'm just simply going to just tie a bow to what has already been done tonight. John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life let me read it again for god this is the bedrock of what we believe for god so loved the world that he gave he gifted his only begotten son that whosoever should believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life i'm gonna preach for a few moments on this subject the messy stable the messy stable father we give you praise we give you honor we give you glory we thank you for the anointing that we feel right now for the next few moments god i'm asking that you will minister to the masses touch them right where they are in Jesus name amen the messy stable if you're if, if you're not too um, you know you're not too negative I want you to just look at somebody in your house somebody might be sitting beside you on the couch just tell them the messy stable the messy state for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son there's something about giving you can use another word, you can call it gifted. God gifted his only begotten son. He did not have to do that, but he still did. When he looked at the situation that was going on, he knew that Jesus would be the only one that would be able to come and rectify what was going on. 
Now we are in the Christmas season. And this is a time and space where gifts are given. You can see right here, there are presentations of giftings right here on the stage where many people will go to the store. They will get on Amazon and they will purchase things. They will have it wrapped in beautiful paper. They will put beautiful bows on it and they will gift it to somebody. Now, many times gifts are received from people who don't even deserve it. Well, can, can I talk in here for a moment? Uh, several times people will receive gifts from people and they really don't even deserve it. See, the thing about a gift is it's not just the person that's getting it, but it's the person that is giving it. The power of the gift is always in the person who is giving you the gift. So whether you are supposed to get it or not, that is irrelevant. The fact of the matter is the person giving the gift was powerful enough and thoughtful enough to give it to you. So for God so loved the world that he gifted the world Jesus Christ. It's amazing that we're always talking about Jesus now, even though the world is trying to get rid of him. Even in the Christmas season, they don't want to say Christmas, so they say Xmas. They're doing everything in their power to X him out. And then they said, well, you can't even say Xmas, so we're just going to say the holiday season. But I came to tell somebody tonight, you can't get Jesus out of Christmas. You can't get him out of the season because he is the season. Jesus is not only the reason for the season, but Jesus is the season. He is the reason that we're here tonight. He's the reason you're here tonight. Now watch this, y'all. In Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, you find the story of when Mary was getting ready to birth Jesus. And all of us have done this before. All of us have been in the plays where, where you see the little manger and you see little baby Jesus and you see um, his parents and you see all the little um, things in the, the, the animals that are in there and all that stuff. We've all been through that. We've all seen it done probably over and over and over and over again. The thing I want to bring to your attention is the fact that there was no room in the inn. Now, now, we've probably heard this a thousand times that when Mary showed up, she was getting ready to give birth to Jesus and she needed somewhere to give birth. She didn't want to just have him just anywhere. She needed somewhere. They went to the inn. They went down there. They went to, to the Holiday Inn. They, they found a place where they could go, but there was no room in the inn. It's amazing that this is now a foreshadowing of the magnitude of the gift that was about to be given. Stay close tonight. There was a magnitude to this thing. It's perplexing to me though, because in Proverbs chapter 18, the Bible lets me know that your gift will make room for you. Now, now it seems a little bit perplexing, Brother Simeon, right here, that, that, that your gift will make room for you. But when God got ready to give a gift to the world, there was no room in the inn. How could this thing be? How could we navigate through this when you're telling me that my gift is going to make room for me? It's going to bring me before great men. But then when Jesus got ready to be born, there was no room for him. Can I submit this to you in 2020? That God didn't want you to be born in an old system. Let, let, give me about three more minutes, Brother Tyler. God did not want you to be born in an old system, so he closed the door. It's amazing to me that when they got there, they said there's no room in the inn, not even understanding what Mary was carrying. Mary was carrying God himself manifest in the flesh was in her womb and getting ready to make his appearance. And mankind said there's no room in the inn. It's kind of like today. That any time God is real. Now, let me talk to the real gifted people. I'm not talking to the folk that just, just act like they're gifted. I'm talking to some real gifted people. The majority of the time, there won't be any room for you. There won't be any room for you. You will not fit in where you are. 
Lord, have I feel something on me now. You, you won't fit in because the magnitude of the gift that you're carrying cannot be held in the inn. God does not want anybody to get credit. So he allowed Mary and Joseph to end up in a stable. The king of kings and the Lord of lords. See, see, okay, can I help somebody? Because see, we're living a generation now where we want everything to be comfortable. If you're gifted, it's going to be uncomfortable. Let me talk to somebody. If you just always looking for comfort, you're not really gifted. Anybody that really is gifted is going to end up in a stable. It's going to end up in a messy place. Lord have mercy. It's going to end up in a place that doesn't resemble where you're trying to go. Wrapped in swaddling clothes with little donkeys looking at him. Smelly in there. The hay was in there with the donkeys eating, whatever else was in there, Brother Josh. And he was in there. And, and trust me, Mary and Joseph were wondering to themselves, how is it that some angel, can we just be real? Some angel from heaven can come talk to us and tell us that, oh, you're highly favored. How am I highly favored? And I'm having my baby in a manger. See, I, I want to talk to some gifted people. How am I highly favored? But I'm smelling this stuff that I'm smelling. How am I favored? Hi, not just favored, but highly favored. And nobody will let me in. Came to tell somebody, if they won't let you in, that's good. That only means you can create your own. If they won't put you on, that's good. You put yourself on. If they won't invite you to their platform, that's good. You create your own platform. Because there came a time when Jesus grew. See, because one thing about babies, they never stay babies. When Jesus started to grow and he grew out of the manger. He grew out of the messy place. They found him at 12 years old talking to doctors and lawyers and educators. And when his parents came to find him, he said, don't you know that I'm about my father's business? Now, there was a transition that took place there because Jesus was saying, I'm not the little baby Jesus anymore that was in the manger. But now I'm 12 years old and I'm on my way to my real kingdom. So I might have been birthed in a messy place, but I'm not going to end up in a messy place now let me bless you right here God is not the author of confusion but he uses confusion let, let, let me let that sink into somebody's Tanya. God doesn't orchestrate confusion but he uses confusion so that he can get the glory Anybody that's ever really been gifted, you have been in the middle of some confusion every now and then. See, folk don't want to tell the truth. You've been in the middle of some kind of confusion somewhere and you didn't even understand why. It's because the gift that was on your life was going on display. The reason they didn't like Jesus isn't because he did anything wrong. It's because he was gifted. When Jesus was 12, he already understood that he was gifted. But people who are not gifted never understand the gifted. People who are not gifted never understand the gifted. People who are not gifted will say to you, stay inside the box. But when you're gifted, you say, I can't stay there. Camp out with me inside the box. Because they're not gifted. They don't understand what is stirring on the inside of you. Now, this year has been a messy, stable type of year. Lord, help me right here. Messy. The smell of politics. It's been all in the room. The smell of injustice. Has been all in the room. 
The smell of the pandemic has been all in the room. Now, I came to prophetically tell you again, this isn't a rhyming reason. I'm not trying to, trying to find something that rhymes with 21. I'm telling you that we're about to walk out of the smelly stable. This year has been smelly. Many have lost jobs. Many have lost loved ones. Ministries have closed down permanently. It has been smelly. But the greatest potential that you have always comes out of a smelly place. When we sung the song, the devil is a liar. God is exalted. We haven't seen nothing yet. 2021, can I prophesy to you? Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into your heart what God has in store. See, I'm not one of these prophets that Johnny come lately prophets. See, no, nobody saw coronavirus coming. But after the fact, whew, I saw it. Well, I saw it. No, you didn't. You're a liar. Because if you really would have saw it, you would have stood up and said, hey, next year, this is what's going to happen. Sometimes we have to understand, even prophetically, that God doesn't want us to know everything. Do you realize you can be a prophet and God doesn't talk to you? Uh-oh. This is supposed to be a revival, man. Let, let, let me get back. Do you realize that? You can be a prophet, but certain things God won't talk to you about. You cannot fall into the trap and think that you always have to have an answer. Sometimes when people ask you a question, you say, you know, I don't know. It doesn't mean you're not holy. It doesn't mean you're not living right. It just means God hasn't talked to you about that. Don't fall into the trap. What does 2021 hold? Well, let me see. Let me see. Thus say it, the Lord. African angels are going to come flying in from Africa and come and save the world. Come on, somebody. God didn't tell you that. You have to understand sometimes God will not even speak to you. And you have to be all right with that. And what God told you the last time, that's what you have to stand on. There's one thing. Let's go, Vars. Let's go now. There's one thing that I understand clearly that will never change, Brother Jeremy. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come. And I'm blessed when I go. That God is blessing everything that is connected to me. That's one thing that I know. So when somebody comes to me and asks me, Sister Jody, do you have a prophecy for me? You know what I'm going to tell them? You're blessed in the city. <laughs> you're blessed in the field. You're blessed when you come and you're blessed. That's all you have to, you don't have to come up with anything new. All you have to do is go back to the principles of the word of God and say, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down, shaken together and running on. That's all you have to say. Brother Kev, I don't know about everybody else. But 2021 will be the greatest year that I've ever experienced. Well, pastor, how can you say that? Every day is the best day of my life. Every single day is the best day of my life. It's not about the flipping of a calendar. It's about me knowing and understanding. It's a mindset that you have each and every day. God has ordained and commanded us to be fruitful, multiply, and to take dominion. I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when I come, and blessed when I go. We are coming out of a messy place. And for all of those that will receive this tonight, I want you to say I'm walking in to the greatest days of my life. Come on, if you receive that, 
just want you to write in the comments pastor i receive i'm standing with you tonight i am walking into the greatest season of my life oh but pastor do you see what they're saying do you see what the news is saying do you see what the newspapers are saying do you see what the naysayers are saying one thing that i know i'm blessed in the city in the field when i come and when i go i don't care what else is going on i know that i'm blessed my ministry is blessed my family is blessed everything connected to me is blessed and as we emerge out of this messy stable god is about to put a robe on us the kingly robe is about to be placed on our backs as the praise team is coming i want to reassure you tonight the goodness of the lord is attached to your life it's not going anywhere it is stuck to you like glue the favor of God is stuck to you like glue God is amazing and even in this Christmas season there's a song that I hear in my spirit oh come let us adore him I want us to sing that oh come let us adore him as we close this out tonight, I want you to know that you're coming out of the messy, stable season. You're walking into the greatest years of your entire life. The best is yet to come. The best is not behind you. The best is ahead of you. Those who have lost loved ones this year, maybe I'm talking to you and somebody got affected by coronavirus and passed away I want you to know that God still has his arms wrapped around you that God still loves you you're still gonna make it you're gonna be all right I know you might be crying tears might be coming down your face right now you don't have your loved one for this season know this that God is still with maybe you lost a job maybe you're standing in a food line waiting to get something to eat know that the messy season that we're in is getting ready to come to a close and your greatest season is ahead of for god so loved the world that he gave he gifted his only begotten son whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life it's the gift that keeps on giving God will never stop gifting himself to us. Let me tell you, you need to just continue to receive it. As we sing this, I wanted to minister to you a very, very profound way. When you finally come to the realization that God really is King of Kings and Lord of Lords in your life, everything will be all right things will change your perspectives will change your view will change you will understand jesus is really the reason for this season and not only is the reason but he is the season so let's come and let's adore him tonight and even as you are adoring him and worshiping him i promise you healing can come deliverance can come you'll be set free hope is coming into your house that's what we promise to bring you. We promise to bring you hope. If we can't offer you anything else, the one thing that we can offer you is hope. Come on, praise team. Let's go higher and worship you.
adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ the Lord, sing, oh, come, let us. alone is worthy for he that something affected your life something touched you that you felt the healing bomb in Gilead flow over your life we want to wish you a big 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 Merry Christmas from JDI Wem, the entire community the entire crew every person that makes all of this happen we want to wish you a Merry 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 Christmas that this will be the best season of your entire life father we give you praise we give you honor for the hope that went forth tonight father we thank you now for every singer we thank you for every musician we thank you for every media tech oh god every person that participated in this service tonight we give you honor for them i pray oh god that there will be nothing missing in their life that the windows of heaven will be opened up over them that you will give them something so big that it scares them in the name of Jesus wherever they need it God give them something so large that it launches them into their future we give you praise total adoration maybe you are saying pastor I want to be able to come into agreement with you if you want to so now maybe you didn't have a chance earlier right on your screen you'll see all the safe and secure ways that you can sow into what you have felt and I always say it like this sow into the anointing it's the anointing that you need to sow into because it's the anointing that breaks every yoke thank you for everybody that has been committed to us all year long everybody that watches every morning every revival everything that we have done you have been right there you've been faithful you've been committed from the bottom of my heart i just want to tell you thank you merry christmas and happy new year god bless you real good